Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, I'll be revisiting the ARX 5600 XT 6GB now in 2022 with 12 games. Is this mid-range GPU released 2 years ago from 2020 still good enough today? Let's find it out together. The RX 5600 XT had a really controversial release. This GPU was designed to compete against the GTX 1660 Ti at the start, but then Nvidia has slashed the price of their RTX 2060 from $350 to $300, making the RX 5600 XT dead on arrival GPU. Nvidia has forced AMD to change the specification of the RX 5600 XT at the last second. It went from 1620 MHz post clock to 1750 MHz. The memory speed went up from 12 gigabits per second to 14 gigabits, and the power limits was raised from 150 watts to 160 watts. It made this GPU more powerful than it was supposed to be. Instead of fighting against the GTX 1660 Ti, it now trades blows with the more expensive RTX 2060. This update in the specs also made the RX 5600 XT really close in terms of performance with its bigger brother, the RX 5700 Nano XT. It has the same exact shader unit count at 2304, the difference being the memory bus and the memory capacity, from 256-bit to 192 and 8GB to 6GB. This is a good thing for us consumers, but the problem was it was a really late decision, and a good amount of graphics card were already on the shelves just waiting for the embargo to be released, so you could imagine a lot of RX 5600 XT with their old BIOS sitting there in the warehouses. AMD and manufacturers release an updated BIOS for the users to update to, though non-savvy users may not have enough knowledge to do so, leaving them with an old BIOS and less performance. There's also small cases of the graphics card heatsink design not capable of sustaining this higher power rated version of the RX 5600 XT, leading it to thermal throttle, though the graphics card we are taking a look today won't have any of these issues, it can handle the new BIOS perfectly fine. The Astrak Radeon RX 5600 XT Challenger Pro 6GB OC is the RX 5600 XT we'll be testing today. It is my main graphics card. I had the RX 480 4GB before, but my friend was kind enough to sell me this GPU for a really good price. It has a boost clock of 1750MHz for the core, 14GB for the memory clock with a 192-bit bus giving it an effective bandwidth of 336GB a second. Since it's already overclocked than it was already supposed to be, there wasn't much of an overclock headroom left. Let's take a look at this graphics card design. This graphics card looks amazing in my opinion, totally not biased since it's mine, not at all. Jokes aside, I do think it's a good looking graphics card. The shroud is black and grey, and the fans are black as well. Unfortunately, this specific variant doesn't have RGB, though, take a look at that massive heatsink. I love huge heatsinks since I know the GPU will be cooled properly. The PCB of the RX 5600 XT is pretty short, so the metal backplate doesn't extend until the whole length of the GPU, leaving some exposed heatsink, and I think it looks pretty neat. It has three 80mm fans that are pretty silent during gaming. I'm really pleased with the thermal and noise performance of this GPU. To power it all up, it just needs a single 8-pin power connector. Here is the complete specification of this graphics card and the complete driver version in which the games is tested. And here is the test system we'll be running it on. I recorded the average FPS of 3 multiplayer games for the multiplayer games, and for the single player, I used the in-game benchmark if it was available, and ran it 3 times and took the average. And if it doesn't have them, I played the mission for 60 seconds and repeated it 3 times and took the average FPS. Background gameplay is pretty accurate since they were recorded with a secondary PC with a capture card. All that being said, here are the results. Enjoy! The RX 5600 XT tore through Valorant as if it was hot knife through butter. An average FPS of 468 and 1% loss of 214 at pretty much the highest settings at 1080p, you can't complain about the performance with this GPU. If you're still bad, then it's not the computer, it's probably your mouse or it's you. Dang it, 
I can't blame lag when I miss my shots anymore. But this is pretty much expected. This is an easy to run esports title. You'll benefit more from a CPU upgrade to run this game at stable high frame rates more than a powerful GPU. Warzone experience at 1080p with pretty much high settings was great. 111 FPS average and 1% loss of 67. The RX 5600 XT is capable of delivering highly playable FPS even at good, high quality graphics. Though Warzone being a huge battle royale, in a more intensive situation, the FPS might dip lower. But with my test run, even with a pretty chaotic scene, the RX 5600 XT delivered pretty well. Fortnite without building mechanic? Is this even Fortnite? It's great for me since I'm terrible at building. <laughs> Anyways, the RX 5600 XT is capable of delivering 134 FPS average and 1% loss of 74 at high settings at 1080p resolution. I'm pretty satisfied with the performance this GPU is capable of delivering. You can put the game on Ultra, but in my opinion, the performance loss doesn't benefit the marginally better graphics. Doom Eternal is a VRAM hog. It eats VRAM just like Chrome eats RAM. Though, I must say, this is a beautiful optimized game. The maximum quality preset for Doom allows for 6GB is Ultra at 1080p, so that's what we're running the game at. With an average FPS of 153 and 1% loss of 115, you can rip and tear like no other with this GPU. I really enjoy playing Doom Eternal with this graphics card. It perfectly delivers high frame rates for the fast paced shooter games and I have no complaints. The RX 5600 XT in GTA 5 is capable of delivering a really playable fluid experience, an average FPS of 125 and 1% loss of 110. You'll be able to do GTA 5 missions without any problems. Since this game is almost 7 years old, at least for the PC version, the RX 5600 XT run it without breaking sweat. This graphics card in Apex Legend was really wonderful experience. An average FPS of 157 and 1% loss of 126. With this kind of hardware, you should focus on your aim and movement. Because if you're still bad, it's not the computer. That's bottlenecking your skills. Though, if you play the battle royale mode in some scenarios with intense fight, the FPS will be lower, but even then, the R5600 XT performs really well in this game. Ah, Cyberpunk 2077. One of the newer title released recently, well, fairly recently at least. It's definitely a hard game to run. The RX 5600 XT at high settings was capable of delivering a respectable 67 FPS average and 1% loss of 52. I myself like having 90 plus FPS when gaming, but 60 is good enough for single player games and enjoy the story with beautiful graphics. I'm satisfied with the performance of this GPU in this game. Forza Horizon 5 runs great with the RX 5600 XT. With an average FPS of 106 and 1% 1 loss of 89, it is an amazing experience. Unfortunately, we are only able to run at high settings because we are limited with the 6GB VRAM buffer. Higher quality requires at least 8GB of VRAM, pretty similar to the situation with Doom Eternal. Putting higher quality preset just tanks the performance really hard and it's not worth the performance hit for the visual quality in my opinion. We went from 106 FPS average to around 60. It does look a bit better but losing that many FPS is not worth it in my opinion.
This mid-range Navi GPU with Red Dead Redemption 2 is capable of delivering a really respectable 70D FPS average and 1% loss of 59. We're not running at max settings but at high, it still looks great. Doing missions with this performance is good enough to enjoy the game. The FPS you'll be getting with the RX 5600 XT on Rainbow Six Siege is just somewhere over the rainbow. An average FPS of 311 and 1% loss of 228, I don't even know if people are capable of noticing this kind of FPS. It's so high and most people are still running on 60Hz monitor nowadays at 144Hz. Though you'll be assured that your 144Hz monitor will be completely fed by the FPS. So if you're missing shots, don't blame me on the computer if you have this kind of hardware. Dirt 5, even at ultra-high settings, at 1080p, pose no problems. The RX 5600 XT is capable of delivering a pretty satisfactory 78fps average and 1% loss of 66. That's a great result for an amazing graphics and good performance. You'll be able to enjoy Dirt 5 to its maximum, I can't complain. Overwatch, the last game we'll be testing. This game is pretty easy to run just like Rainbow Six Siege. Even potato computers are able to run it. So it's not a surprise that the RX 5600 XT is capable of delivering over 200 FPS. In fact, it's 213 FPS average to be exact and 145 FPS 1% loss at ultra settings. You'll definitely be competitive in this game with this GPU. All you need is to better your personal skills. Well, what can I say? The RX 5600 XT is a great 1080p card. Maybe not for ultra high maximum settings, but a humble high settings. Which, let's be honest, it's rare that there's a huge difference in visual quality from ultra to high. The biggest difference is the performance loss you'll have when running games at stupidly high ultra settings. But if your GPU has the power to do so, then sure, it's completely fine. Anyways, I'm extremely satisfied with the performance of the RX 5600 XT with the games. My only complaint is the 6GB of VRAM. I would have preferred 8GB since games like Doom Eternal and Forza Horizon 5, the GPU is capable of giving more but it's just limited by the VRAM at higher settings. Though it's not a big deal as I said, just dial down the quality a little bit. And you'll enjoy most of the games at fairly high settings at 1080p. So would I recommend this GPU in 2022? For sure though, it really depends on the price in the end of the day. If you can find it for around 200 euros used or even 250 considering the market today, it's still worth it in my opinion. It comes close to the performance of the newer RX 6600 XT that retails around 350 and 400 euros. Thanks for watching the video everybody, I appreciate your support. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe to not miss upcoming videos. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type it in the comments. I will reply when possible. Share this video if you think someone you know would want to see it. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel, take care and see you next time. Bye.